Hello everyone and welcome. This is Fun Sunday Politics live on China's television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. It's been some weeks of worries over the state of security in the country. Escalating situation in Plateau State and yesterday the Chief of Army Star Lieutenant General to read language visited the state where he ordered troops to adopt a more aggressive posture and stamp out terrorists. Wreaking havoc in Plateau State and other state. Take a listen to the Chief of Army Staff. I've had a chat with your commander and his planning staff on the security situation on the plateau, especially in Mangu. I know that the situation here is complex because a lot of people have imputed religion, they have imputed ethnicity, and what have you into what we are experiencing here. But as soldiers, your focus is on one thing. Every lawbreaker must be apprehended and anyone that is found in possession of arms must be brought down. Is that clear? Yes. Those instructions are very strong, but then the federal government has also been reacting to some of these concerns on the state of the nation. And today, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has strongly dismissed some claims while trying to get some commitments from Nigerians by assuring that the government is doing its best part of, and part of what he says is to dis dismiss claims that the relocation of some departments in the two agencies of government are political moves to marginalize a section of the country. In the area of security, this is what the minister says. Um, the minister says that, quote, in the area of security, all threats are being boldly confronted. We are taking the fight to the criminal's dens with promising results within the last week. Several bandits, kidnappers, and militants have been neutralized or arrested. On the economy, he says, Quote, regarding the economy, all relevant ministries and agencies of the federal government are working in coordinated fashion to bring down inflation, stabilize foreign exchange rates, and create a truly enabling environment for business and investment. In Nigeria, that President Tinubu seeks to build is one where no one is left behind. And on the relocation of departments of some federal ministries, he says, quote, it is not true that a relocation to Lagos of the headquarters of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, and of certain departments of the Central Bank of Nigeria are political moves aimed at marginalizing a section of the country. These allegations are unfounded. Instead, these are pragmatic administrative steps to improve operational efficiency and reduce operating costs. End of quote. That is the Minister of Information there. But so much to take in if you look at the condition and the state of things in the country. You as a citizen, you perhaps are bearing the brunt directly and you are feeling the heat directly. Because when you go to the marketplace, you are the one spending your money to buy. Does the government of the day know what you feel, your plight? Have they been able to move up to the expectations and the promises they made during the campaign? When those of you who voted for this government and those who did not, when they were campaigning, are these promises being kept? Look, a lot is going on in the country. The All Progressives Congress, APC, must be thinking deeply now about the promises they made to the Nigerian people during campaign and the burden of delivering those in the midst of negative indices that we now see and the plight of citizens. One of the major blocks in the ruling APC is a group of governors, the APC governors, the Progressive Governors Forum. They are very influential blocks who you can say produce the candidate Bola Tinubu in the premise of the APC. And tonight, they say they are equally concerned. The chair of the Progressive Governors Forum and governor of Imo State is my guest tonight on the program, Senator Hope Uzodema. He joins us live in Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Shame. A lot of things are happening in the country. And one we wonder, especially coming from the governors of the APC, your party made bold promises. You said it was a renewed hope agenda. But on the lips of many Nigerians, now they'll be asking, where is the promise? Where are those promises made to them? 
Thank you, Chen. Um, we had a manifesto as a political party or progressive congress. And before we supported the emergence of President Bola Metunibu as our candidate for the election, we sampled the opinions of Nigerians. We evaluated the situation on ground. And it was very clear to us that a president that will be needed at the, that point in time has to be a pan-Nigerian has to be a man that is versatile, with experience to manage the economy, manage politics, and also manage social existence. And in President Ahmed Bolatinembo, we saw his credentials. And as a matter of fact, in our party, President Ahmed Bolatinimbu was a candidate that was sponsored by consensus by the Progressive Governors Forum. And I can tell you that he's a pan-Nigerian. He understands very clearly the challenges facing the country and relatively very versatile confident that he will address and correct the ills of the society. But the versatility, Governor Uzodema, some Nigerians will be asking, where is that versatility? No, let me tell you something. If you are, there is a difference between a patient and a doctor. The process of identifying the ills of the society and the process of propounding a solution and applying that solution, there are two different things. President Bola Ahmed Tinimbo is the, the president of Nigeria just how many months ago? Don't forget from 1999 to date, how many years? And here is a president who came, despite the inability of previous governments to remove the cancer in our system as a society. Which is? Which is subsidy. How much of a cancer is quote, it? Quote and unquote, the provision of subsidy for petroleum products for 40 years, government after government, we are not able to remove this anomaly in the society, anomaly in our economy, anomaly in our existence. The Zimbola American came under seven months. In fact, the day he was sworn in, he made the proclamation that he will remove the subsidy. And you know, and I know. Governor Zodema, this particular measure that you, you mentioned is what a lot of Nigerians will say. It was a knee-jack approach. It, perhaps yeah. one policy, there are a lot of people will say, good policy, but not well thought out. It's, it's biting hard on the average Nigerian. The cushioning effect is not properly laid on no, the ground understand, the understand, was established. Understand that the problem can be likened to malaria. Somebody suffering from malaria. And every time he has fever, and he's drinking Panadol. And every day you take Panadol, and the malaria still exists. You are sick until you are properly treated. Him, with the Bola Metremo, is not unaware that what is happening now will happen. But yet, he took courage and boldness to manage this matter. If you must be treated of a sickness that requires a bitter pill, when you swallow the pill, initially it will be very bitter. You may be angry, but when it gets down to the system and cures the sickness, you will begin to appreciate the real essence why that pill was applied to. There are those who will say now, yeah, you're applying the medication, but things are not working, people are dying, no, 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 things no. are getting worse, Every they don't feel like uh, it, uh, things are... Because uh, those who will say, look, why shouldn't the government... And I'm looking at those who do not understand the English language we are speaking right now on television. Their major concern is that they are not able to meet the needs of their, of their children 
of their wife, of their community, because of the biting state of the economy. Can I tell you the truth? If you must want to know now. The truth is that the subsidy that has just been removed was benefiting a group of cabals who became billionaires overnight, who became very rich overnight, to the detriment of Nigerians, uninformed and ignorant people in the remote areas. But President Bola Ametinimbu see interest. His interest of those people are the remote areas. You have billionaires who bought private jets, who built castles all over the world. Very few of them in the name of subsidy. But what we are saying, how do we consolidate our economy? So the Naira that used to be stronger than the US dollar will come back. But the, the, the Naira to dollar parity, I mean, the, the, the rates in now is it's all time high. It's never been this high. We Almost 1,400 1, at, 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 at the parallel market. In the program of economic recovery, there is what we call infancy stage. He has just drafted a policy that will make Naira very strong again. And there will be initial challenges. The cabal will want to frustrate it. The cabal will want to sabotage it. Those who are fighting against the common economy of our country to benefit themselves will want to sabotage it. Is that what is going on? But we need time. And how time, much time? And time shall tell. Governor Udodema, do you know how much percentage that Governor, uh, I mean, President Tunubu has spent in office in his, first, in his four years? He in, spent a considerable amount of time, first, almost seven months, from 19, almost a year. Okay, I'll ask you one question. From 1990 to today, how many years? Answer. Well, Governor Uzo, the man, well, no, answer first. Are, how many years? I'm the one asking the question. No, from 1990 to today, how many years? The question is Nigeria voted for Bola Tinubu for four years, hoping that he promised he's going to fix the problem you of Nigeria. Didn't vote, you voted not to a magician. You voted to a visionary leader. But what, your party preached almost a, 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 a magic to Nigeria. No, no, but the party preached that they have a solution to the problems of the country, vis-a-vis -vis the economy, the politics, the security. And I can tell you, without any fear of any contradiction, that the current policies of Bola Ahmed Tinimbu as a president is the password to, the, to, to enter the system. I can tell you that... What he has done by unifying the exchange rate program, what he has done by removing petroleum uh, product subsidy, what he has done by deploying and strengthening the security architecture to address the three principal problems of the country vis-a-vis -vis economy, security, and then foreign exchange disparity, which will make Naina very strong. The cabal who are currently holding the dollars who are currently sabotaging the system, who are currently angry because they are out of business as a result of this bold policy. They are still fighting. The time shall tell. Mm -hmm. And in the next couple of months, when we begin to see the result of the current policies of the current administration, I will tell you that Nigeria will rise in, rise in unison to commend the president. Are, are, these, the same, are, are these the same cabal who are um, responsible for the state of insecurity in the country right now because things are very difficult. A lot of people are living in fear uh, from Lagos. They kidnap, I mean, the chairman of a political party in Lagos on his way to Lagos, kidnap, the kidnapping from Kaduna to Taraba. Even the FCT things are really in a critical stage. You have forgotten, Shion, that the security, insecurity in the country did not start with President Bola Metinembo. Recall. That even under President Yaradua, Musa Yaradua, that insecurity reared his ugly head. Coming up to President Gulog and Barry Jonathan, up to President Mohamed Buhari, insecurity was very here in the country. And what has happened? Check the constitution of the current security architecture in the country. We talked of inclusiveness. We are a situation that, the, for the first time in this country, I can tell you, I come from the southeastern part of the country, and I can tell you that this is for the last 10 years, we are having 
one of the service chiefs come from Southeast, the chief of Naval staff. That has given sense of belonging to the people of Southeast. The wisdom, well appreciated. So this thing that has cumulatively been here over time is being addressed. But I don't see the reason for this hurry. The anxiety of making sure as if it is going to be a magic that the ease of 20 years must be solved in seven months, to say the least, is unreasonable. Those who are in pains and who are in abject poverty may not agree with you. When you're asking them that they, are not, they, should not, they should be patient and they keep suffering, they keep feeling the hardship, it might be unfair to them, don't you no, think? Poverty of how many years and government of how many months? Let us comparatively discuss this issue. Mm. That you have been in poverty from 1999 to 2023. Let's talk about what has happened in the last one year, in the last seven months of President Tunubu. The price of Gary, my viewers can tell us. The price of rice, the, my viewers can tell us. The price of yam in the market. Prices have skyrocketed. In the last December uh, uh, the celebration, they can tell you, those who feed, the manner in which they fed a year and two years ago is now very different. And if you are telling them tonight that they should be patient, and you are telling them tonight that the, this ori is unreasonable, do you know what their response will be to you? No, no, let me tell you, it's not telling them, because you are speaking from one side of the society. Let me tell you something. If the policies, the situation as it is now, today, and the consequences of the various policies of government is not unexpected, there is no how you can, you can cure the Im negative impact of a subsidy remover. You can cure the negative impact of removing a cabal that have managed our exchange rate programs over the years to their interest without some pains. This initial pains is why federal government has introduced some measures, what we call palliative measures. But they will ask you, they've not seen no, it can never how, be, many, how many people It can never be enough policies. because it cannot only dash fish to human beings. You must teach a human being how to fish. The dashing of giving of um, palliatives by forms of foodstuffs, palliative envelopes, can never be enough. We are trying, the president, as I, I understand, is trying to bring a permanent solution to the problems of poverty, hunger, and then bad economy. So I think that, speaking with the president, I'm the chairman of Progressive Governors Forum. I preside over the meetings of 20 governors in Nigeria, out of 36. I've interacted with the president. And she, you don't know me to be a, 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 a psychophant. If the president has no clear direction of what will lead Nigeria to prosperity, I will be one of those that will first begin to protest. But he has a solution. I have considered a permanent solution. How long more can should Nigerians wait? How long more should they endure this pain and I, this suffering? I don't believe in hypotheses. I don't come here and sit and become a prophet. But I tell you, in my findings, and the understanding of the country that there exist cabals and deities who before dollar business can be conducted must be worshipped. Who before political decisions must be taken must be consulted. And this has become a retardation why, to the progress of Nigeria. Why can't we take out these cabals? Are they bigger than no, this is a, why, They are the people sponsoring both artificial media they are the people sponsoring opposition to come with the blackmail and the negative propaganda against a president who is very versatile, who is from the private sector, who meant to well, who wants to correct the issues of the past. Are they the same people who are sponsoring foreign investors who are leaving the country in droves? No, the, those living are not investors. They are those who are benefiting from the Kaba system. When they tell you they're leaving, they're leaving because they can no longer benefit from foreign exchange disparity. They can no longer benefit from crude oil theft. They can no longer benefit from the cases of uh, petroleum subsidy. 
pretending to be important for when they were not important anyone. Forging documents to access of government money. Those are the people living. And again, it is a blessing in these guys because the more they live, the more opportunity the indigenous companies will have to participate. There is no rocket science. There is no foreign investor who is comfortable in his country that will want to leave his country and come here. And at the same time, there is the people of the good investors and genuine investors who are Nigerians who have been denied opportunity to practice and invest. They now have opportunity to do so. So I think the earlier the artificial and fake investors leaves, the better for Nigeria. And when you call some of these blue chip in, uh, companies, this private sector, that they are operating in other climes. You, I mean, you describe them in this way. Those who think and, and say that the present climate in the country is not really favorable. The, 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 we, we take the oil and gas industry, for instance. Is there anywhere in the world you go and you see any filling station, you want to refill your car that is not Shell, Mobile, Chevron, Total, how many of them are operating filling stations in Nigeria? Why are we isolated? And they call them real investors. Why have they taken to offshore operation, abandoning onshore operation? If they are genuine, you go to Houston, landing Houston airport, you see oil locations, you see vegetables planted all over there, habitable for the human existence. Fly to Wari, as you are landing Wari airport, look at oil locations, look at the sea, all these fish, all the, there is no, no, nothing existent. No fish is there, nothing. The environment is degraded to criminal level. Are there what you call investors? People who have no regard to our environmental laws. Are there what you call investors? People who now operate to double standards, apply a different application in other countries, and then apply degrading application to Nigeria. Is that what you call investors? Please, if we don't take our destiny in our hands, we will be doomed for it. We must find courage. And the Bola Ahmed Tunimbu must be supported to succeed. I won. I'm not a prophet. But my experience of life, my experience doing business for the past 45 years, tells me that this is the man to support so Nigeria can become Nigeria again. Let me ask, why is, I mean, uh, you are the uh, leader of a political bloc in the APC, the ruling party, but it does look like internally your party is having some political issues. And there is a decision on a policy of government, for example, the planned relocation of some department uh, within, the F, uh, within the aviation ministry and in the CBN is causing a lot of opera. And in fact, it has come to the point that some political figures are threatening that if the president and the government goes ahead with this policy, it will have dire political implication. So, like what example? I mean, Senator Aline Dume was on this program. Okay, listen, I listened to Aline Dume. I also listened to uh, Northern Senators Forum. I listened to the M of Kano. I can see the preponderance of opinions. And then the majority opinion is that merit should be the driving criteria for decision makings in the country. The movement of the operational, operations department of fund to Lagos, where Lagos is the major aviation hub. Aviation hub is in Lagos. And if the operations department is sent to Lagos to be able to manage aviation operations effectively and efficiently, I have not seen any ill in it. On the other hand, the CBN we are talking about, without prejudice to whatever anything government is saying. All the banks, all the commercial banks, central bank is the banker's bank. Their job is to supervise banks. And if all the commercial banks have their headquarters in Lagos, it goes without saying that the, the banking supervision department of central bank should be resident in Lagos, if they must be efficient. And this is very correct to ensure that the banking supervision is regular, efficient, and effective. Now, there is no how 
a president Ahmed Bola Tinubu alone cannot move the capital of Nigeria to Lagos. If you understand the doctrine of separation of power and how the constitution of the country runs, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive, even within the executive, there we have checks and balances. So but the merit should be the driving criteria. I'm not holding brief for Mr. President. I'm not his spokesperson. But I think that I was once the chairman Senate Committee on Aviation. And for me to be able to supervise that sector very well, I knew how many times I went with my committee on oversight functions to Lagos. And I know how much we spent. And if efficiency should be the name of the business, and they will must save cost, it means that the supervisors and regulatory institutions must be resident proximity to the residents of the operation. Therefore, if you move FAN, the Operations Department of FAN to Lagos to supervise airlines, it makes both economic and political sense. But why are some northern political elites and leaders fighting this? No, you don't understand. I I'm telling you that the president, Ahmed the Bola Tinimbu, he has come with bold policies to rescue our economy. And here comes those he defeated in the field during the elections, sponsoring campaign of calumny, sponsoring black propaganda to demean his government and the achievements. And I can tell you, Sim, they did this to the former president, President Mohammed Buhari, and they almost succeeded. But this time around, we will rise to the occasion. We will do whatever it will take to identify these black legs in the country and call them to order. So when they said it, there is a hidden agenda between, I mean, behind those plans, you don't think that that's... No, listen, that, 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 that's they, you, know, you were here in the country in, in, in the last election. Nigerians voted for President uh, Aswaju Ahmed Dunumbu because he's a pan-Nigerian. He's a highly detrabalized Nigerian. He's a creative thinker. He's a man of ideas. Even when he chose his running mate in the Muslim Muslim ticket, those reasonable people who initially were against it, seeing the bold steps he's taken now, have come to terms with the reality and they have started commending him. So it is not about gossip. It is not about blackmail. So you, you, you I mean, they, 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 they said it was the work of the Lagos boys. There is not that a, there is a political am, 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 I a agenda. am I a Lagos boy? I'm from Southeast. I'm the chairman of Southeast Governors Forum, five states. I'm the chairman of Progressive Governors Forum, 20 governors. And we are unanimous in supporting President Bola Ahmed Tinimbo to ensure that he succeeds in rescuing this economy in rescuing this country, in making sure that we live according to the expectations of our find, founding fathers. And I can tell you, Shim, seven months or eight months into his four years mandate is not enough to judge him. So why the hurry? Some people are suffering from anxiety cirrhosis. Some people are not able to come to terms with the reality of the, on the ground. And I am confident, like I told you, I have my belief that if this man is not able to get this country correct, then something must be wrong. Let's take a breather. Uh, there's so much more to talk about. Um, uh, the former, I mean, the, the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has his own view about the approach of President uh, Bola Tinubu. There is uh, the issue of security situation. Even the governor of uh, Imo State, on a day that they will refer to as a sit-at-home day in Imo. So he chose the inauguration to be on that day. There are a lot of issues. He's the chair of the Southeast Governors Forum. And all of these security situation, those asking for restructuring, these are more issues. We dig deeper into some of these issues when we return after this break, everyone. Join us again. Welcome back, everyone. Let's continue our conversation with the chair of the APC Governors Forum, the Progressive Governors Forum, 
and is also the chair of the Southeast Governors Forum. The governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodema. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time tonight. Thank you. Let's get to the issue of security. Uh, for a moment, uh, governors are called chief security officers of their state. But how much of that power do the governors have? Kidnappings are happening in most parts of the country. What are you telling yourselves as a bloc in solving these problems in your different uh, uh, states? Well, there's no doubt the governors are chief security officers of the state. Because Nigeria is a federation, and there are two governments in one. One is the federal government, and the second are the federating units. Therefore, to be able to operate in a synchronized manner, we need to have the proper synergy that will, because the security, according to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is in the leg exclusive legislative list. Therefore, what is expected of the subnational government is to key in and have a working synergy between the federal establishment and that of the subnational government. The reason being that security is very expensive, and I can't see any subnational government in Nigeria today that can fund completely the cost of providing adequate security in the various subnational governments. So working together as a federation, we have to manage our work programs in synergy with the federal security system. So when people said governors are handicapped, I don't agree that governors are handicapped. So you have all what it takes to fix security problem in your state? We need support from federal government. It is a it is job in progress. We need to articulate properly, working in synergy with federal security agencies as a subnational government, how we can create a working relationship that will allow us to be on the same page to be able to fight crime in the country. The reason being that the might is with federal government. The economy of subnational government is lean. The funding requirement is enormous. So it has to be a collaboration. Do the state governors think that there is a need for state policing? Yeah, it, it is. Even the federal government have allowed the vigilante approach. How many state governments are able to fund an effective and efficient vigilante organization. So state policing cannot work? Is that what you're saying? It will only work if we stay in a position to fund it. So when we talk about true federalism, we are not joking. First of all, as I speak, so many of our states cannot even fund our existence without allocation from federal government. And the meaning of government is not com coming to consume. The meaning of government is you face as a, at a subnational level, if you are a state, what the onions. You make the money before you can spend it. But those who are crying for restructuring, those who have cl uh, clamored for restructuring are saying state policing is one way to go. So you're saying that the state government, the subnationals, as it is presently constituted, cannot properly run state police. No, it is not running state po police. When you talk of restructuring, we are already a federation with subnational government. The first thing to establish is how many states are viable. Because the geographical, the geographical jurisdiction of a state and what makes you autonomous as a federating unit is your ability to exist. If you are a state that is existing at the mercy of federal government, it is not left for you to say whether you want existence or not. So we think that we need subnational governments that will face whether subnational or federal government 
you must first earn the money before you can spend it. So, I mean, is this the reason why a Bubaagu is not really working in the Southeast? No, no, I don't know what it means. We don't have a Bubaagu. I have almost a security organization. But that was a regional security network put together by the... No, it was an acronym, a global acronym for Southeast Security Organization. But in the most state, what I have is Imo Security Organization. And it's a vigilante group that has a, a program for both the traditional rulers, the Thai Union presidents, to come together with security agencies to provide quality intelligence for security agencies to operate. Is it working? It is working. And that is why we were able to overcome what would be failed in state in the last three years. Is that one of the reasons why you boldly took, because there are those who are saying, why will Governor Uzodima put his inauguration on the Monday? There are those who, who feel that that is some kind of, I mean, what message do you want to pass? No, 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 you know, it's, it's a, a usually sit at home day. No, it's, a, the con it's a constitutional issue. I was sworn in on 15th January 2020. And then to be sworn in again for the second time, 15th January uh, 2024. And it happens to be on a Monday. And by which time, God has already intervened our efforts and the contributions to allow an enabling environment for good governance was almost in place. So, and our people, the reaction of Imo people who appreciated my outing for the first time defied every threat and came out. So you went ahead and do it anyway? Of course I did it. So, but I mean, you are on, you're running on your second term now. Yeah. Uh, and those who are afraid that Uzodema will be complacent. And that complacency is the fear of the second term syndrome, where governors get, the chief executive get, get into office and they forget all the promises because they are not seeking re-election. No, those who are thinking of that are people that are under illusion. Because when I came the first time, I came with the eight years manifesto. And those who have copies of those manifestos will see clearly that despite the challenges I had in my first term, I was able to achieve 75% or more of the promises in that manifesto, otherwise called my vision document. Vision document. Now, coming again the second time, now I said during my inauguration that I, my second term outing would dwarf the achievements of my first term. Is it a commitment you are making now it, to I the even, people of Imo State? I even said on my honor, I swore to it. And the same I want to tell you, I'm a creative thinker. Without fear of anybody accusing me of intellectual arrogance, I'm a creative thinker and understands the geography and the workings of the political system of the state. And I know what my people want. And I'm working towards what my people want. And I must change the narrative before I leave. So you are, what, are you, what commitment are you making to them tonight? My commitment, the people who are watching by tonight. By the time I will, be, I will be leaving as the second town governor of Imo State, Imo State will never be known for bad news. But you promised them some jobs that, I mean, there are, there are going to be foreign jobs to them. Have you kept to that promise? I have. Listen, see, creative thinking is the order of the day. When I came, I looked at the situation in Imo State. Too, the poverty was too much. The unemployment market was huge. And I saw clearly that if we don't cure, the, reduce the level of unemployment in Imo State, there will be no economy. I looked at the, 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 the curriculum, the school curriculum, and the, the kind of graduates being chunked out. Social sciences, history, arts and culture, and all that. And I checked the market. And you must balance the demand and supply. And what was in the market, market is already gone to a digital status, digital economy. Now, I created what I call Digital Ministry, Ministry of Digital Economy. And what did I do? I created a program called Skill Up Emo, Digital Skills. I introduced new digital skills. I graduated the first 5,000 people. All of them are working 100%. The second graduation, Skill Up Emo 2, called 2, 
I graduated 15,000, 75% are working now. And all of them are now employers of labor. And now we leverage on Mr. President's visit to India and Dubai, where he signed an MOU that will allow India and Dubai to come to Nigeria to bring out the kind of digital, digital services they require and get people to be employed. I leveraged on it and then amended my resume and then employed, recruited another 40,000. The implication of that is that the Cisco, the company, the consultant that certifies these digital skills and gives them provisional licenses or certificates will certify people in Imo State. And the companies outside Nigeria will employ them to work for them. As I speak to you, under my digital scheme, over 6,000 people are working for foreign companies. You promised 4,000 foreign jobs. I have, that was your I have more than 4,000 already working. Certified. Certified working. How, how, how can Nigerians be able to verify? Visit Imo State website. You find the information for yourself. Uh, 4,000 emo More than 4,000. Are working, are working got in foreign jobs. With, they have even an alumni platform now. And each time I want them, at the press of a button, they respond. I have computed and automated transactions and processes in Imo State government. And the governance in Imo State has moved from the Stone Age to the digital stage. Let me ask you, you mentioned this, I mean, uh, the state of Texas the other time. I mean, you, you're talking about Houston and you talk about the relationship to oil production. And that's one thing that you can identify with the state of Texas in the United States. As a governor of Imo State, what would you like your state to be identified for? Recall that the National Economic Council at the last sitting he consulted the Crude Oil Theft Committee and made me, me, the chairman of that committee. I've had two meetings in that committee. And the first discovery is that despite the crude oil theft, the so-called crude oil theft that has been clouded our economy and the country, that the regulatory responsibility of government has not been up to expectations. What is more? Do you know that under the Pre-Shipment Act 2004, import and export, that all exports in the country requires export permits. And all export permits granted, the process must be repatriated back to the Central Bank of Nigeria that included NNPC and all the oil companies in Nigeria, that 90% of them are not repatriating the process of crude oil export back to the country, making the solvency margin of our local currency dormant. So as an interim major, I have just written to the oil, oil, all oil companies, including the NUPRC, who is currently regulating oil production in Nigeria, to ensure that before they issue crude oil export permit for in any quarter to any oil companies, that there must be evidence of the repatriation of the process of the previous export to central bank attached to the application. That is the only way we can have dollars. But, that is the only way dollars will not be scarce. That is the only way Nigeria can be relevant, Nigeria Naira and be strong and solvent. To kill the cabals within that sector. That is it. And that so, is what the president is suffering. So there are cabals because this in the cabal, security? There are cabals in the No, in the I did economy. not say cabals in the cabal. security. You know, because, yes, you know, because you will have people who may be vulnerable. But I am saying that if, for instance, we're exporting one million barrels of crude oil and you have exported it under an oil permit, export permit, that the cost of that one million barrels crude oil in dollars should come back to Nigeria as what we have as, an, our, as our export. Governor Osodema, uh, I need us to wrap up now. Um, what would you think that Imo State should be known for? 
under your watch. Under my watch, I want to create, you know, I have a mantra of three R, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery. And the whole destination is prosperity. So under this mantra, I want to recover all the access roads, recover infrastructure, create jobs. And how do I create jobs? I need power. I need industries. Industries cannot come if they don't have power. I've created and I've gotten approval from the presidency of Rice Oil Processing Free Trade Zone, where we'll reach Uguta Lake or Rice River to the sea, where we'll provide Rice Power Development Company, where Rice Power Development Company will transmit and distribute power to industries, where we will maximize the abundance of our endowment, gas. Imo State has the highest gas reserve in the country, speaking as said today. So I have, have what I call, I have what I call gas okay. optimization program. Governor so I'll create an economy. We, we, we yeah. have 30 seconds to go. I understand that people are now jostling uh, for who becomes you. Just a few months into office, or a few weeks into the office, and people are already jostling for who succeeds you. Very interesting politics. But in 30 seconds, if you can tell us, uh, there is Hedia, there is Okorocha, there is uh, Uche Ogumba, there are a lot of political uh, opponents that you've had. How do you hope to bring back your political enemies or political opponents back to the table now that the elections are over? We have 30 seconds to go. If you listen to me during my inauguration, I called on all the political gladiators in Nemo State to come together. Let's unite and develop our state. Power belongs to God. As I speak to you, I don't know who will succeed me. Only God knows. It's as simple as that. Governor Oop Uzodema, the chair of the APC, uh, the Progressives Governors Forum. Thank you so much indeed. And the governor of Imo State, thank you so much. For Before time. I leave you, I must say one thing, one second. That the political situation in the country, democracy we are practicing is government of the people, for the people and by the people. Let those who did not win or who lost during the last election find courage and time to recontest. But the, however, encourage the current president in his programs so Nigeria will be better off for it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Senator Opus Odima, for your time. Well, just before we go, and here is my final word tonight. Mr. President, Senator Bola Tunubu, it is to you tonight that I bring the burden and plight of our people too. I trust this message finds you in good health and high spirits as you continue to navigate the intricate responsibilities that come with the esteemed position you hold. It is with a heavy heart and deep concern that I pass this message on the current state of our beloved nation, Nigeria. In a time when the heartbeat of our nation is raising with fear, and the very fabric of our society is tearing at the seams, we stand at the crossroads. President Tunubu, the nation calls for your undivided attention as you embark on a private visit to France. Our beloved Nigeria is grappling with unprecedented challenges that demand urgent and decisive action. Kidnapping and abductions are the order of the day. From Lagos to Kaduna, Taraba, and violent and criminal activities have pervaded our land even in the heart of our nation's capital, the audacity of kidnappers has become a sinister reality, striking fear into the hearts of our people. Our citizens are living in constant fear, unsure of their safety and the safety of their loved ones. This is not the Nigeria we dreamed of, not the renewed hope that was promised. We applaud the gallantry of our security operatives, but indeed more work still needs to be done to keep the people safe. Efforts are being made, but it appears they are not far enough. What has become the strategies of, of the strategies of state policing and community policing that has been talked about several years? And the huge white papers and advisory notes on how to tackle insecurity in Nigeria, where are they? President Tinubu, as a pro-democracy agitator, isn't it the right time to restructure Nigeria for it to work properly? Is the Nigeria you and your friends fought for? Is it the Nigeria that you're talking about? The removal of subsidies has unleashed a tidal wave of economic downturn, leaving families struggling to make ends meet. Prices of commodities have gone through the roof. The biting effects are felt across the nation, and the loss of confidence in the government is palpable. 
This is not a time for complacency. It is a time for bold, unwavering leadership, Mr. President. I think it is about time to get the nation's egghead in one room and find a lasting cure to our ailing economy. As you stand on foreign soil, Mr. President, remember the weight of your, on your, of your responsibility to the Nigerian people. Our citizens, including those who voted for you, are losing faith in the government. The implications of the loss of confidence are far-reaching. And as a leader, you cannot afford to look away. Investors are fleeing the nation like never before. Economic potential of Nigeria is being squandered, and the consequences will be felt for generations. We urge you, Mr. President, to take immediate measures to create an environment that attracts and retains investment. The clock is ticking, and our economic future is at stake. Mr. President, the time to act is now. Swift and decisive measures are needed to curb the escalating insecurity, elevate the economy burden on citizens, and restore the confidence in the government. This is not only a call to fulfill campaign promises, but a plea for the preservation of our great nation. Mr. President, our regional leadership is hanging in the balance. Some members of ECOWAS are signaling exit, and Nigeria's influence is under threat. It is time to reassert your leadership. Strengthen diplomatic ties and secure our place in the Committee of Nations. As journalists, we will not shy away from probing, inspiring, and holding leaders accountable. President Tunubu, live up to the expectations of your calling and the mandate upon which your office stands. The Nigerian people deserve more. They deserve a leader who acts with urgency, integrity, and unwavering commitment to the well being of our great nation. The challenges may be daunting, but if you are resolute, and carry the people along, we can all together overcome. The giant of Africa must now rise and take its rightful place in the Committee of Nations and unless its potentials for the Nigerian people to smile again. God bless this Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is my final word tonight. Good night, everyone.